But actually, yeah, just before we, we discuss uh, your, your book in more detail, um, and you're just talking now about the posts that you're doing and the writing that you're doing, I don't know if it's maybe just me, but one of the messages which seems to be coming across is like this kind of new age masculinity that you kind of uh, are speaking about and, and portraying. Like, what does that actually really mean and, and why is it important? Well, I think it's important because I think we're living through an incredible era with Time's Up and Me Too. And it feels, you know, for some people, it feels wonky or choppy and confusing because we're living through it right now. And I, and I do think whether we want to call it the current political climate or who might be in our White House here in the States, but I think there are certain catalysts that are, and it's just not one, you know, but certain catalysts that have sparked this to come up. And for us to have greater awareness around, you know, the opportunities that we give to women, uh, what it means to be a, 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 a male today, a guy today, uh, equal opportunity for people, diversity on many fronts, like we're, it's all coming together. And I think the internet's definitely helped us out to say, hey, like, oh yeah, like before I just thought I was like the only one. Now I can like go online and see I'm not the only one. There are people yeah. like me. And so now this is all coming together through social media and in our conference rooms and in our in our, our kitchen tables and our communities and it it's all new and mm -hmm. it feels for some it feels scary mm -hmm. for some it feels like invigorating and it's messy and you know for me I, you know i'm the byproduct of some great female mentorship throughout my career and i also you know got involved because i wanted i wanted a better world for my daughters hmm. you know, my daughters who are just as competent as the guys they go to school with when they become professionals and they go out in the workforce, they should get paid what another competent guy gets paid mm -hmm. to me. That's like a no brainer. And for every company out there, they can make that change happen like today. Yeah. Right. It, that, that doesn't need more analysis. It just needs the courage to make the damn decision. Mm. And so when I joined the Healthcare Business Women's Association, because that's an advocacy group within healthcare, really trying to promote gender parity, which is a big umbrella topic, but equal pay, opportunities, uh, valuing diversity. I did it when the girls were really young because I wanted a different world. Now they're 18 and 21 and the world hasn't changed as much as it needs to change. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And now we're in this meet two times up era that I think it's ever so important for guys also to step into the conversation. And, and for us as like white guys, like from, I'll just sort of speak for myself here in the States, like I never really found myself in the minority. Mm. And empathy is so critical now to help bring our communities together so we can listen to connect with each other that joining organizations like the Healthcare Business Women's Association or being in situations where you're in the minority so you can feel what it feels like to be in the minority then maybe that helps you show up a little bit differently and ask a better question and have a better dialogue because i do see a lot of guys during this era sort of like oh god this is scary i don't know what i should do I'll, i i will you know i've heard guys say well maybe i shouldn't have one-on-one -on -one, uh one-on-one -on -one meetings with my female direct reports maybe i should do it out in the open what and, you know, and, and they're never going to mention this in a corporate workshop, mm. but they're mentioning it after maybe a couple glasses of wine as the guys sort of go off and talk after a dinner party and the women go off and talk after a dinner party. And, and so they just don't know what to do. So what they're doing is sort of retreating from the conversation that we need to have mm -hmm. because we need to get men involved in the conversation and women involved and people of all color and all backgrounds and all perspectives because today's problems demand diversity because they're more challenging than ever before. And the world is flat in so many ways because of mm. like how we live now. <laughs> and, and so for me, I think it's important to sort of think through like, what does it mean to be a guy? You know, back in the day, I thought the guy was the provider. The guy was the dad. And I really felt I had to be Superman at home and Superman at work. 
because I was living through like old sort of old paradigms or mm-hmm. old belief systems. And I was living that way, but I was also pouring a whole bunch of stress inside of me. And like, I like to say that SUV literally and figuratively knocked all that like mojo out of my body <laughs> because I was just pouring it in and pouring it in and I wasn't releasing it because I had no idea how to release it. I didn't, so I was just repressing it. And after a while that just bubbles up and it, that's not a good outcome. So I think today we're, we're living through something that's, I think, spectacular, although can be frightening because mm. we don't know, we don't know where it's going to go. But I do know is that if we all lean in and have a conversation, what it means to be a man today, how can we work with our female colleagues and not be their rescuers? You know, women don't need to be rescued. You know, sometimes mm. they just, they need the, for us to get out of their own, you know, for us to get out of their way. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, mm. um, but what does it mean to be a, a male ally at work or a sponsor, an advocate, a partner? How do we have better conversations, not only between men and women, but just across the board? I think it's an incredible time. And I think if our generation, you know, sort of like Gen X, maybe some of the younger baby boomers, even the millennials that are coming up, if we can have a better conversation at work, we can change work for future generations. And as I mentioned earlier, if we change how we work together, I feel very confident that we're going to change how we live together because we Mm -hmm. are spending so much time at work. Totally. I guess, you know, from my perspective, it can be, I can understand why it's tough and confusing for some people, because on the one hand, you're celebrating your masculinity and your, you know, that, that that's an important aspect. But on the other hand, you're also sort of being told, no, we're all equal. There are no, a lot of these gender differences, et cetera, aren't really real. And I, and I think it, I suppose it's good that we, at the end of the day, as you mentioned, Obi, is it's the, the communication. So when things are, a bit messy and a bit tough you, you, people tend to step back and and but you're still having the conversation actually with your like you say with your mate or someone else so we just need to be able to lean in and and discuss these things but i do get like how, how these like you said these transitory periods can be quite confusing you've got these jordan petersons and you've got these strong voices on on different ends of the spectrum and it must be quite confusing to be a youngster especially I mean, for me, even, I mean, for anybody, I suppose, just to, to navigate all of that. I think it's, yeah, I think it's really, it really is confusing. And if, many of the guys today, they didn't necessarily create the problems of the past, mm. you know, because they weren't, ar- they, they weren't around. Mm. But we do have a responsibility to work on making it better. Yeah, so we mm. didn't spill the milk, but you know what, we're responsible for cleaning it up, at least part, part of the way, like, you know, again, not to make it up, like the guy has to do it all, but like, it, like mm. together we do it. Um, mm. Having that responsibility or accountability. And I think it's very possible we can have multiple definitions of what it means to be a guy. Mm. You know, and it, where in the past, there was probably like one dominant view of what it means to be a man. Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour, and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold mountain range. Gotta be quick, so.